Well, it's really good to be here today again in God's presence. And uh, I just want to read a few verses from Psalm 91. Verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place of the Most High. Now, if you're a born-again Christian, you know that secret place is in Jesus, isn't it? If you read John 15, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you abide in the vine, you'll bring forth much fruit. It's about abiding in the vine. It's about abiding in the vine. And that is in your quiet time with God every day, reading the word and praying and listening to God. And also doing the things that God tells us to do, you know, having regular fellowship with other Christians so we keep on track and uh, listening to good ministry of the word from your pastor or your teach, teacher and so on. And so that's what it is, you know, um, keeping spiritually fed. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. And he said, feed on me. And so when we open the Bible, we're feeding on Christ because Christ and his word are inseparable. So it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's how you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, by doing the things that I've just mentioned. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, well, just realize that he died, bled and died on the cross for you as your substitute sin bearer. And if you ask Jesus into your life and, and repent of your sins, say sorry for your sin, and ask him to come in, realizing that he was punished in your place for your sin, you can receive him as your Lord and Saviour and uh, you can abide under the shadow of the Almighty Jesus. Remember that when the children of Israel were um, travelling to the Promised Land, it says that that rock was with them all the time, the rock that water gushed out from and, and watered the people. Uh, and the rock, there was a, not only the rock, but the cloud was there. Now, who was that rock? That rock was Christ. And when you receive Jesus Christ into your life, you have the solid rock in your life. And so you have a foundation for living. And so you're safe in him. This world has been shaken and everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But if you have the rock in you, it's an immovable rock. And um, his name is Jesus Christ. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. We're talking about a refuge here in a world that lots of people are feeling very vulnerable and uh, wondering what the next problem is going to be, the next catastrophe or disaster or next problem they're going to face or problems, daily problems that they face. Now, I'm not saying you walk through life. But some of you don't seem to have that. But there will be a time when you will have to face some kind of problem. But it's good to say that within it, within it all, Jesus is our refuge and fortress. My God in him I will trust. It's all about faith in God, the Christian life. It's trusting in Jesus. It's keeping our eyes on Jesus. It says he, he will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. He's keeping your mind on Jesus, keeping your heart in Jesus, keeping your faith in Jesus that you will have peace. He says he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you you shall take refuge. It's like that bird, you know, all the chicks come under its wings and they're protected there. They know it's a place of safety. And that's what it's like when you're trusting in the Lord. And it says in verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. And it goes on the arrow that flies by day. Talking about all kinds of attacks from the enemy. They come, don't they? They come from all angles, from all directions at times. They come mainly through people's actions and reactions and the poisonous words that come through people's mouth that the devil is inspiring to attack you at times. It does happen. Yes, there are a lot of nice people about, but there's a lot of nasties out there. And, uh, you know... We've got all kinds, aren't we? Everyone's different. We're all unique. And so you come in contact with these people daily. And so, but it does say here that even though they're there, we can find a refuge in the Lord and be protected from all these things. It goes on to say that no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling that's talking about divine healing and so we have the promise of healing in that verse for all those who are trusting in jesus you know there's all kinds of sickness in the world today 
But it says in the Bible that Jesus is the great physician. Don't give up on Jesus. We all suffer at times. Sometimes it isn't instantaneous, our healing. I know I've been through it myself. But that doesn't give, make me give up on divine healing. I believe in the Lord. I've seen, seen lots of miracles and healings in my uh, praying for others. And sometimes I've been praying for others and they've been sick and ill and I've been suffering myself and I haven't had instant healing. But I've kept trusting in the Lord. And we still have to trust in the Lord even though it may be a, a prolonged period of time we're sick. But you keep your trust in Jesus and, 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 and believe it. And not only believe, but act your faith out and drive it out in the name of Jesus. Command it to go. Virus, germ, bugs and infection, infliction of the devil and oppression. Command it to leave your life in the name of Jesus and your, and your house. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwes, dwelling. Um, and so this passage promises protection from sickness as a blessing for the redeemed people of God. The word plague in Hebrew means nega, and it is used of something afflicted on the body, and especially was used to refer to spots of leprosy. Well, now that can cover everything, all kinds of sickness and disease. And that's it, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Look, when Jesus redeemed us, when he went to the cross, it wasn't just from our sin, it was from our sicknesses. And we can believe God, not only for cleansing from sin, but, you know, eradication of sickness in our life. And because that's what that word plague means. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Now, how can you get rid of that plague? By believing what I'm saying today and eradicate and command it to leave your life and body and house in the name of Jesus Christ. So that promise of divine healing is for all those who are born again. It says in verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In the hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So we have a promise of divine protection here. And you can read right to the end of the chapter because we love the Lord he has set his angelic protection around us. I remember many years ago, I went to a revival in Spain. I stayed there two weeks and I got to know quite a number of the people there and they were planting church. And the revival was happening so fast they were having to make prefabricated buildings to put the people in and planted churches all over the place. But they made me a cake. It was my birthday and it was a massive cake and they put that scripture on. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in the hands of you shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. But I can honestly say I've had the protection of God throughout my life when many times the devil has tried to kill me, uh, putting all kinds of things on me, sickness, illness and everything else. I can testify to God's protection, healing and blessing on my life for many years now, for 35 years. And I can honestly say this as well. When they made that cake, because of a lot of hitchhikers going through and people getting saved left, right and centre, they're all hungry. So they all took a piece of cake and didn't leave me a piece. So I can always remember that bit. Thank you for listening today.